All right, we got a little uh, beetle in the house. We're gonna be working on. So I figured I'd start a video series on this. The owner uh, wants some videos. So this guy drove all the way from Texas to have me work on his car. Uh, this motor has 2,000 miles on it and he wasn't happy with the performance. I drove the car after I took him to the airport because he got here sort of a, on a time crunch. And uh, the carburetors are really bad. You know, they're not jetted properly. There's a problem with the air cleaners restricting the airflow at an idle, making them real rich. And it's really affecting the performance of the motor. So we're gonna have to correct the carburetors uh, obviously, but he would like to put a uh, 78 crank in it, so we're going to go ahead and pull it out and uh, put a little crankshaft in there, buy some spacers, get some push rods, basically build a motor for it. So we'll uh, start taking some of these items off. It's got a lot of aftermarket fasteners, so it won't go as fast as usual, but it's got a vintage speed exhaust on it, which is really nice. The car is a pretty nice car. It's actually a Mexican Beetle. And uh, they're sort of rare over here in the States. Nice ones anyway. This one's really nice. So we'd be curious how this would run with good carburetors on it. Uh, it's got out of the box K runs. They look like empties. They're the repops. <clears throat> I've never actually used these before, but they have an awful flat spot in them. And then when it comes to an idle, it wants to uh, get real rich. Puff black smoke out of the uh, tailpipe. I do believe it's probably got a float that's a little high. It's overflowing a little bit. Or it could just be the fact that the air cleaners are so restricted. Uh, K-Drons come with a pretty decent air cleaner on them. They have a lot of surface area. And in the past, I've tried to reduce the size of the filter for various reasons, clearance issues, whatever. And even with a smaller K&N filter, they didn't flow enough. They uh, changed the characteristic of the carburetor and made it rich, like the choke was on. So I've always tried to give it as much filter as I can since then. You know, I get the tall K&N ones and keep them clean. And when they start getting dirty, I think the bus starts running like it's got the choke on it. So it's real critical to uh, have the proper airflow to these carburetors. Being that it's a K-Drawn, I don't want to you know, ruffle any feathers, but it's much easier to make power with a two barrel than it is a one barrel if you're after, you know, seat of the pants feel. So it's probably not the right carburetor choice for what this guy wants. So, we'll get the carburetors off and see if they're 40s or 44s, and uh, see what jet they have in them. If I had to guess, they just put them in right out of the box. And I think they're sort of jetted for a 1600, you know, not much of a motor. This is a uh, 94 by 69, and apparently it has uh, decent heads on it, CV heads, so we'll see. You guys know what makes them go fast, cylinder heads and camshafts, so it's got a 110 cam. It should make more power with the camshaft. It really doesn't run bad once the carburetors clear out, but you just have to run it too hard to get the power out of it. And uh, he doesn't want to have to run it real hard. He wants the power low, and he wants nice torque, and he wants dependability, so. That will probably require a crank change. But this is a really nice car. It's a 96. And it's really sweet. It's got a lot of suspension mods on it. And uh, I think he's done a lot of the work himself. It's got a really nice interior in it. It's really cool to see one of these. I know it's a a late model. A lot of people don't like that kind, but I have a 73, so I don't mind them too bad. Mine was a birthday present, so I can't give it away, you know? Gotta keep it. So anyway, we'll get 
this out of here. So the seal in here pretty tight. And then somebody didn't do a bad job on this. I mean, I don't know how much of this work the customer did and how much the shop actually did. But uh, somebody did some fairly nice work in here. It's all put together nice and neatly. It's got nice pulleys on it. It's got a serpentine system. MST pulleys. Like I said, vintage speed exhaust. Nice parts. It's just not the right combination of them, I guess. So we will figure it out. It's got my favorite ignition system in it. Just joking. It's a Petronics. I don't mind those, but if you're gonna have that, you might as well have a spare one in the glove box just in case it goes bad. That's why I don't have them. I like points, they're cheap. I got an extra distributor under the seat. I don't want a good electronic distributor. You know, let's get a uh, CB Performance with a programmable curve in it or an MSD. Because every Volkswagen benefits from like a, a nice hot spark. So that's a good investment because you can jet the carburetors properly if you have the proper ignition. But you're sort of limited if you have a blue coil and an 09 and no ever uh, kind of spark applic or application where it amplifies the spark so you can uh, jet the carburetors. The more fuel and air you get in the motor, the more power it makes. And also, the more efficiently it burns the uh, fuel charge, the better mileage you'll get. So it works both ways. A lot of guys run the MSD. I've always used one. And uh, it makes a big difference when you go to jet the uh, carburetors. You can put much more jet in there. Especially if you got a turbo car, six ALs an hour. The six isn't really good enough. You want a hot spark if you're turbocharging something. We use the uh, MSD A plus in Knoll's car, and then usually a seven AL or AL two or four cylinder. It has the proper spark energy. So these have those real short filters on there with the uh, screen over the top of them. And it's running really, really rich. Somebody's already started to do the modification here where they move this up out of the airflow, but I think these filters are causing an issue. But we'll, we will try to use them, so see what we can do. Should be able to make good power with these, with the proper jets and air cleaners. Everything's put together very well on this. The seals on everything, washers under everything. Quiet in here now that the 40 horse project's gone. It showed up right after uh, CT left. So that worked out. It was fun doing that little 40 horse. You guys go check those videos out over on CT's channel. We're definitely gonna make some more videos together. So that'll be coming up.
probably try to keep those on his channel. I'm gonna go over there and help him with his bus a little bit. And, uh, get that motor put in, clean the engine compartment up, paint that stuff, help him weld some sheet metal in. Try to get him a Volkswagen to drive daily, because he's really, he likes Volkswagens, he's really uh, enthusiastic about him, which is pretty cool. So, he's not scared to get dirty. We got a, uh, there. Everything's tied away, nice and neat on this, I love it. These uh, air cleaner bottoms off so I can get my fat hands back there and get those plug wires loose. This gas pedal in the car is so hard. It's got double springs on it. I'm just not used to that, you know. My bus is easy. I guess that's personal preference. These might need to be unbolted, it appears. Got some big screws on it, so. Yeah, there's too many little screws in here for me, man. They're fairly long, so if they ever did come loose, it'd take a while for the carburetor to swallow it. That's a lot of hardware over the butterflies, man. I have a feeling that might be different when it leaves. Yipper. Let me see if I can get my hand back there now. to the nitty gritty. Getting to the Allen screws here. Got a nice wiring harness. Everything's hidden, so. down to the uh, carburetor. We'll get those off next. So figure out what we got for the linkage here. I think this is scat linkage, I'm not sure. It's 
not catered on like each, but I don't know what comes with these carburetors. Like I said, I've never bought the empty style ones. Chicken dinner. Oh, uh, what kind of bolt we got on the other side? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Doop, doop. These carburetors aren't synchronized either. I don't know if you guys can see this on. Probably can't see that carburetor, but this one's ahead of that one. And that's why you get that popping noise when they're not synchronized. They don't, you know, act right. I don't know. They don't have the uh, balance tube on these either, and that makes it sort of uh, not as drivable. You have to get it tuned perfectly if you're not going to incorporate that tube. That helps balance the two carburetors together. But it's real important to get the, the linkage as good as you can. After you do this for a while, you can look at both of them, sort of cross-eyed, I guess. But uh, this one's definitely ahead of that one. It's moving and that one's not moving at all. I've been told not to move the camera and shake you guys up. You'll have to take my word for it. So we'll get that straightened out too. They'll be synchronized. Tuning the, tuning the carburetors is just as important as building the motor. I mean, almost more. Obviously, whoever built this motor got the assembly right because the guys drove it quite a bit. Well, you know, drove it straight from uh, Texas to here. And uh, it seems to be in fairly good shape. So, uh, even though the performance isn't what this guy wanted, the assembly is pretty nice. Because if it's not right, it'll definitely uh, blow up on a road trip like that when they're new. If you just put them in the car and drive them and it doesn't have bad things happen to it, usually that means it's pretty happy. Uh, a 110 cam, even though it's not my favorite, you know, it should make pretty decent power. That was the uh, cam that everybody used back in the 70s and 80s before the F FK series came along. And a lot of guys still use the uh, W series because they couldn't afford high lift rockers. You know, back when those bird rockers were $260 and everybody thought that was a lot of money. I'm joking. That was a good deal. I had Sigurdsson rockers first and they, they'd fall apart all the time. You know, they were like race pieces, I think. They weren't really designed to drive on the street. And when the bird rocker came along, man, that just made my street car a street car. I was able to actually adjust the valves and uh, drive the car. I know this is the right size. It was just in there. Okay. Maybe it's not the right size. Maybe it's American. That's not usually how it goes, but. Yeah, see, there we go. It's in there. Like Prego. I have to go get my uh, short, short ring. Short bus. There we go. We had it worked out. bad boy so we don't lose any of this stuff. Beautiful. Now 
we got some more Allens here. Allen, Allen, Allen. stuff off the sheet metal because we'll be painting this so uh that stuff it comes with and it doesn't hold up very well so they're a different size different size This car's got an electric pump with a Holley regulator and it was set properly, two pounds of fuel pressure. A lot of times there's too much fuel with an electric pump. But that didn't seem to be the issue. But the carburetors definitely aren't happy, whether it be the jet, it was more than just synchronization. So, I'll have to uh, he wants it for the highway basically anyway. It's got a really nice transaxle in it. I don't know the gear ratio, but it, it will uh, go down the road really nice. This is a swing axle, being that it's a Mexican beetle. So we're going to take the transmission apart too and fix that. It's got leaks. So we'll take that apart after we get all the parts ordered for the motor. I'm trying to get the uh, stuff ordered by Monday. And then we can uh, pull the transmission out and do that. I was getting the two liter ready to start back there. And uh, the carburetors on that are food board. So I have to go to uh, Orlando. Either the scooters Monday or Triangle. And get some uh, top gaskets and some jets. It had 135 mains in it with 200 airs. It's probably going to need like at least a 145 main jet. With the camshaft and the cylinder heads that it has. There we go. Sneak back here and get this one. Folds. I guess that's what comes in these kits. I don't know. Remember when they used to have steel manifolds, like two tubes welded onto a flange? Really crude. I did notice these uh, aluminum ones were getting really chilly, icing up. Wrong 
harshers on there. We'll fix that. Not the ones I like to use, I should say. I don't know if they're wrong or not. They're just not spring washers. So we'll put some of those on there because I like the springies. They seem to help it stay tight. Carburetors need all the help they can get. They come loose at the worst time. Those are 44s, man. They look pretty big. I'll have to check them. I'll have to check them. Feels like it's got some decent cylinder heads on. I'm going to have to check those out when we get it off. Get it out of there. Go ahead and get this uh, side over here. Get some of that chain sides with you guys. I don't have two different cameras, so I'll have to make this one work. Try to move you real slow so I don't get you dizzy. Maybe I can just work around it and not get my fat head in there. First thing we got to do is get the, uh, make the drop again. Sides a different size. Yep, I'm smaller over here. All right. Yeah, I saw uh, CT drop another video. I thought we were gonna get to see that thing run today. He's teasing us. I don't know if it runs or not. I'm not gonna spoil it. You'll have to wait and see. This one's tight to the firewall over here, man, and of course it's the hard one to deal with. We're gonna get it though. It won't beat us. This ring has got a better angle of the dangle here. Usually the snap-on wrench is the better angle of the dangle, but the gear wrench wins out this time. Threads into the arm, the other one just went through the arm. I like consistency one way or the other. I think you make this one the easy one to get off. This guy's been trying to get me to work on his car for some time now. He's been talking to Andrea. She usually talks to everybody 
corresponds with people. And then finally he just called and said he was on his way. And he showed up, drove straight through, like 600 miles. It's hardcore. Hardcore. Can't tell that guy no. Okay. There's got to be a, a hose clamp shortage somewhere. We got everyone on this motor. They're all here and accounted for. All right, we got to take that uh, top piece off over here. Or the stack. That might be how these come. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I guess that baby's attached behind the fan housing. This guy is pretty thorough. Push that back there out of the way and work around it. Yeah, I saw somebody, uh, what was that guy's channel? He's building a class 11 Baja. Dude, what's his name? Shreddy Life. Shreddy Life, I think. Went to MP. And they were making some trick parts there, man. They got some new CNC machines. They were machining some billet tops for 48 Webers. They look pretty sweet. I definitely like to try to get a field trip at that place. Maybe we can take the camera in there and show all my subscribers that all the inventory they got, 300,000 square feet of Volkswagen parts. It's pretty amazing. Somebody made an investment. Looks like they bought some really nice machines too. I don't know what kind of stuff they're making. I just saw the carburetor tops and they look nice. I think Jack Sakai works at Empty Gutney. I don't know. Another uh, legend. Bucket list. Got to meet one day, guy. Got some big old fat marshers on here. Trying not to get the shine off the top of that head. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Just wanna grab this washer. Get this one in the back. Alrighty, fish this out of here and we'll take our fuel line off. Fuel line's attached to the firewall there. Everything is fastened down on this very well.
this adjuster right here really needs to be changed over to a screw. You just can't get to it, it's jammed up against the firewall. I was gonna adjust these and I wasn't able to because this was stuck and I couldn't get to the accelerator pump. Uh, you have to adjust these pumps up a little bit. You know, if you got a bigger motor, you wanna you know, turn that in a few turns, make the pump work a little, uh, little jaker, you know, do a little adjustment there. And then of course the uh, main jet is critical to increase the size of that. I found that 135 is sort of like the magic uh, jet, the main jet anyway. For most small, mild combinations, it seems to work pretty well. I use it on my 1600 and it keeps the cylinder head temperature nice and low. And I'm sure it prematurely kills the plugs every once in a while when the weather changes, but the benefits far outweigh the uh, downside for sure. So there we go, we got the uh, carburetors off. We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery and get the uh, hot wire disconnected. And I'll probably pick this up on another video. We'll go ahead and get this on the bench and we'll pull it apart. We're gonna record that. We'll get it on a stand and then we'll uh, inventory the parts that we have. See what camshaft we have. We have a good CV cover, oil cover on it. It's already full flowed. It already has the oil system in place. Like I said, the motor is in good condition. It came here all the way from Texas, 600 mile road trip, and uh, the heads are still tight. The oil was clean, not dirty. You could still see the stick. It had good oil pressure. So, uh, although maybe there was a communication issue with what the final goal was going to be on this, whoever built this did a good job, uh, I think. I mean, you know, we'll see what it looks like inside. It's got a few oil leaks, of course, and he doesn't like that, and we can, we can fix that. The little sealer here, a little sealer there, eliminates that, knowing which sealer to use where. It has a sump on it. We're gonna put a smaller sump. He needs clearance. He drives to Mexico a lot, so he needs the uh, road clearance. Over there, I guess the roads aren't really good where you can have a big sump. And the other thing that I'm sort of concerned with is the uh, fuel. I'm gonna call Oscar up and uh, talk to him about uh, what kind of availability they have over there for gas so we can come up with a compression ratio that's suitable for where he lives. So I don't know uh, what's available in Texas, whether it's 93 or 91, or if it's regular uh, gas, like if you're building a uh, Baja motor for, it has to almost run on kerosene. Because there's, uh, I guess, issue with gas over there. They call it pea gas. But anyway, that's where we're at with this one. Like I said, I'll get the battery disconnected. I have to wash my hands because the interior is like cherry in this thing. White or peanut butter, really nice. Maybe we'll show a video of the rest of the car later. We have to uh, do the transmission. I mentioned that. We're gonna work on the front suspension. Everything's pretty fresh up there. It's got Bilstein shocks, sway bars, but it wanders around a little bit. I drove it, it's real darty. So more than likely it needs an alignment. And uh, I might put some camber shims under the beam to make it handle a little better. You know, just some little tricks here and there. It's got a lot of the good stuff on it. It just needs to be dialed in. So uh, we're gonna put some mounts on the transmission. Some I'll probably order all that stuff from CB Performance. That's where he wants to get the, the crankshaft from. So we're gonna get a CB crank and I'll make a parts order from there and get all the stuff because they have pretty much everything we'll need. I think it has aluminum push rods in it now. We're gonna go ahead and put some Manton push rods in there. Just because. And uh, have to decide what to do with the valve spring. Deciding on what cam we wanna run. I don't wanna to get too crazy on it. It has to be really dependable on a really sort of a mild combination on the valve train. If you're gonna highway drive it, then want dependability out of it. But it has to make power too, so. Uh, 
We'll see what kind of cylinder heads we have. A lot of times if the heads are really nice, you know, you can go a little smaller on the camshaft and the cylinder heads will, you know, pull it through the power band. So uh, we're sort of limited with a single spring, probably at about 5,500 safely for the single spring before you start really, you know, abusing it, taking a chance of breaking it. And like I said, whoever built this motor, it runs really well. Uh, once the carburetors, you get that uh, fuel out of them, you know, they're, they're real rich when you let the clutch out. So it, it like wants to die and not drive good when you let the clutch out and it takes off. And then it, it's, it's still fat, you know, and then once you get it, you know, your foot in it, it eventually clears out and takes off. And uh, it really runs better than the valve spring it has on it, I think. You know, it'll turn way past 5,500. So we'll take a look at all that. I don't like the 110 just because it's real rampy. You know, there's other options on the camshafts that are close to that as far as cam lift. And uh, it's got a better profile on the lobes. So we talked about that. And uh, I think that's about it. it. Just basically needs an alignment, reseal the transmission, go through the motor and uh, dial that in. It's got a vintage speed shifter, vintage speed exhaust, so it's got some really nice components. He's got the brass shifter upgrade, uh, bushing upgrade in there, and it shifts perfect, man. Uh, I personally never drove a car with a vintage speed shifter before, but uh, pretty sweet, man. The guy does really nice work, and this exhaust is like, uh, you know, next level. You don't usually buy stuff like this off the shelf. I mean, the TIG welds are perfect, they're, you know, I don't know. If you guys have this stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's a little painful when you buy it, obviously, but the, the quality is uh, really nice in person and uh, seems to work very well as far as the shifter goes. I mean, it's rock solid. I've never felt a shifter that nice before. So, and I, I drove a lot of cars with Berg shifters, and it's more than likely the bushing upgrade that people are doing now. So... Uh, so yeah, let me go ahead and shut this off, and then we'll uh, make another video, uh, get you all updated on the motor. Like I said, we're gonna pull this apart probably tomorrow night, I make my order Monday, and uh, get started on the transmission, order some caster shims for the front, and uh, just little odds and ends like that. Uh, it's just little dialing it in stuff, making it real sweet. A lot of the stuff's already there. It just needs to be, you know, fine-tuned. So. so that's where we're at. And uh, thanks for watching. If you guys wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.